Hi friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be chatting through my most anticipated releases for the months of October, November and December. So I have 10 of them. I have done these this video throughout the year, so uh, I have three other ones that you can view uh, as I have done them quarterly. So in total I have 40 uh, 2021 book releases that I am excited for. So here are 10 that are for the last three months of the year and this looks like to be a lot of sequels <laughs> i'm afraid so but that definitely shows that i'm recommending the whole series as a whole and it means that you can maybe read them and get prepared for the this release the dates uh, that i have here are accurate as of the time of filming i have got these all from uk amazon so these are the uk release dates uh, for quite a few of these, uh, the UK releases are generally on a Thursday, whereas the US is on a Tuesday. So potentially you might want to take off two days. It seems to be the thing. I, I don't know. I don't know why publishing is like that. But so I think for a few of these, there might be two days early in the US compared to the UK. But I've got the UK release date because I'm in the UK. <laughs> on the 5th of October, Vesper Teen by Margaret Rogerson is releasing. This is a new release by this author. I've read her previous two books, An Enchantment of Ravens and Sorcery of Thorns, and I've really, really enjoyed them. So I'm definitely interested to see what she comes out with next. So this is a new YA fantasy about a teen girl with mythic abilities who must defend her world against restless spirits of the dead. So yeah, it says that she is a nun who cleanses bodies of the deceased so their souls can pass on. And it looks as though in this world, spirits can rise from the, the dead and possess people. And yeah, I mean, I have really, really enjoyed her other two books, as I said, so I'm really excited to read more of her books. I feel like I'm gonna like it. I just, you know, sense that I will, I will like this book based on it having enjoyed her writing style and the way that she has constructed her previous two stories. Um, and then on the 19th of October, uh, Little Thieves by Margaret Owen is released. I have not read any of Margaret Owen's books as of yet, but she has a duology already out. This is, I believe, a standalone, which is uh, it's a retelling of The Goose Girl. As a teenager, I absolutely loved The, fairy, the, the Goose Girl as a retelling. Uh, I reread and reread The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale because I loved it so, so much. So I'm really excited to actually read more Goose Girl inspired stories. I actually do have an archivist from NetGalley, which I have not got to yet. And so definitely need to try and get sneak that in into my October reads. If you don't know, The Goose Girl is a, is a story where uh, the maidservant takes the place of the princess when they're traveling to a, another kingdom and pretends to be the princess and then the princess tries to claim back her position. So I think um, Little Thieves takes a slightly different take on that because um, I think the main character that we're following is the maidservant that is attempting to replace the princess. And yeah, and then the final October release is Midnight in Everwood by M.A. Kuznia and this is a Nutcracker retelling. I have actually already read this and I talk about it in my reading and travel vlog in Greece because I try to read quite a lot of arcs then and so I really really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. It was just so magical. It was so so magical. Um, I think it's been marketed as adult but I would say it would suit the YA audience more. I, I don't necessarily think it's really that geared towards the adult audience but I found it so magical. I was so enwrapped by it. It completely transported me. I was, I was, I was there. I was in this snowy landscape. I was completely transported. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. So I would definitely recommend picking this one up. It has an absolutely stunning cover and it is the perfect wintry read. I did not read it during a wintry time, but it would be perfect to read it while surrounded by snow. Yeah, yeah just a very nice wintry read. So then moving into November. November? seems to be like a very big month for releases. Like everything is coming out in November. All the sequels. I, I'm going to be like just reading sequels and new releases in November, I think. On the 4th of November, Jade Fire Gold is coming out by June C.L. Tan. Yeah, it's a debut novel um, inspired by Chinese mythology with rich magic and an epic slow burn romance. In an empire on the brink of war, An is no one with no past, no family. Altan is a lost heir, his future stolen away as a child. When they meet, Altan sees Anne in a path to reclaiming the throne. Anne sees a way to finally unlock 
her past and understand her arcane magical abilities, but they may have to pay a far deadlier price than either could have imagined. So definitely really interested to to read this. I have really been enjoying um, Asian inspired fantasy stories lately and so definitely up for reading more and I'm really enjoying, I was about to say this trend but that doesn't sound really right, I'm really enjoying that the publishing industry is publishing more Asian inspired fantasy stories. On the 9th of November, Alexi Harrow has a new book coming out called A Spindle Splintered. I have enjoyed both the 10,000 Doors of January and The Once and Future Witches. 10,000 January, 10,000 Doors of January I enjoyed more, but these, um, I think she's doing some novella fairy tale retellings. This is a Rapunzel one. That's as much as I'm going, as I know. I mean, I guess it's quite short. It's saying that it's 128 pages, so not very long at all. So I don't really want to dive too much into the synopsis, but I, I assume it's going to follow in a similar vein to the, is it Rapunzel? No. Sleeping Beauty. Oh, uh, Rapunzel's the one with the really long hair. Oh, okay. It is a Sleeping Beauty retelling. Abby. Uh, so uh, that's as far, that's as much as I really need to know that it's a Sleeping Beauty retelling and that I have liked the author's previous works. Then we're into a sequel, sequel land. On the 11th of November, The Bone Shard Emperor is coming out by Andrea Stewart. I really liked The Bone Shard Daughter, which I read earlier this year. And so definitely excited to see where the story continues in this sequel. In this world, you have these, I guess, sort of constructs which are formed from little bones. So every human in this world has to get a little piece of their like bone from behind their ear. And that is used to bring life to these animal style constructs which can then depending on how many pieces of bone they have it depends on how much they can do uh, whether they're more complex of thought or whether they're more simple in terms of the tasks that they perform um, and the um, the whole archipelago tricky word <laughs> is uh, formed around these constructs and that they it runs using them and the emperor and this is a multiple perspective story you have it's really interesting how some of the perspectives are told in first and person and some in third and so you have like the daughter of the emperor you have a young sailor who is in search of his missing wife you have these two women who are on one of these other islands and so yeah I, you have anim animal companions so i'm just really excited to see where the story goes next also coming out on the 11th of November is The Fall of Babel, the fourth and final book in the uh, Senlin Ascends series of the books of Babel. I have liked but not loved this series, but definitely interested to see how it ends. I mean, I've made it, made it all the way through the first three, definitely going to see how it ends. This you'll follow your main character, Thomas Senlin, who him and his wife go to the Tower of Babel and at the beginning of the first book, they become separated and the Tower of Babel is not quite what it seems, and that, that yeah, it has many, many flaws, and flaws as in levels, not, I mean, it definitely does have its flaws as well, but <laughs> flaws. And so you see Senen as he goes up to different levels of the tower and the characters that he meets along the way. The story has definitely expanded and to where we are now we have a much wider cast of characters which I personally really enjoy um, having more multiple POVs and um, so it feels like there's more going on than just the search for Semlin's wife Myra and uh, so yeah really interested to see where this story concludes and, and see what I think of it. And then on the 23rd of November Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson is coming out this is the third book in the Skyward series which I have really thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, I've read both Skyward and Starsight and definitely interested to see where the story goes next. I know that he is currently releasing a few novellas in that world. I think he has two or three novellas that are coming out between now and that release or um, in and around that release. I'm not too sure on the reading order of whether you have to read these new novellas before Cytonic or whether you can read Cytonic and then read the novellas. If you know what order those need to be read in, then please let me know. But I know that there is Cytonic coming out on the 23rd, 23rd of November, and there are also three novellas interspersed between now and the end of the year. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to Cytonic this year, because I feel like I would like to reread the other two books in a series before continuing. 
uh, just so that I have it all fresh in my head. Uh, and I think I'd have a much more enjoyable experience if I had it all fresh. Uh, and so part of me is hope, thinking I might delay a little bit uh, reading it and then maybe read the third and the fourth, read it all when it's the fourth and final book comes out. But really excited and um, yeah, I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the Skyward series and would definitely recommend it. It's one of my favourite sci-fi series. Um, and then moving into December with Jade Legacy, which comes out on the 2nd of December. I think it's 30th of November in the US. So it does border the two months. Uh, but the, U the UK release is the 2nd of December. Um, uh, this is the third and final book in the Greenbone saga, which is one of my favourite ongoing series as of right now. Um, so really excited to see how it concludes. I've heard only positive reviews for the third book so far from the people that have got early copies. I am desperate to read it. Desperate. Uh, and I'm so, so excited to see how it all wraps up. I really liked Jade City when I read it last year. I loved Jade War when I read it in the, over the summer and I just can't wait to see where it goes next. Uh, if you haven't started The Green Bone Saga, I would strongly recommend it, especially if you like family drama, political tensions, magic. Um, isn't it, I'd say it's quite slow burn, but then there are like, when there's action, there's action. And I am really, really excited to see how it concludes. And then the final book that I have that's coming out in December is one that I actually haven't read the first book of yet. And that is The Liar's Knot, which is coming out on the 9th of December. This is the second book in the Mask of Mirrors trilogy uh, by M.A. Carrick, which is a author duo. I am really, I, I feel like Mask of Mirrors is going to be for me. And I've been planning to read it like all year. All year I've been planning to read Mask of Mirrors. My friends have been telling me, Abby, why have you not read Mask of Mirrors yet? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I keep getting distracted. Uh, the sequel, yeah, is coming out in December. And then I'm not sure if there's a release date yet for the third book. Uh, hopefully sometime next year. They've really come out quite quickly, seeing as The Mask of Mirrors came out at the beginning of this year. The second book is already coming out. So it's been quite a quick turnaround between books one and books two. So I've, hopefully it's not too long between the third book's release. Fingers crossed I enjoy it. I know a lot of other people are really anticipating this release, especially those that have loved Mask of Mirrors. Uh, Mask of Mirrors, I believe you are following a main character who is infiltrating this high society as a con artist. I've heard that there's ballroom politics and I love ballroom politics. So I was like, sign me up straight away. I need to read this and I still haven't. But one day, one day I will read it. So those are 10 releases that I'm really anticipating for the next three months. Let me know if there are any anticipated releases that you are really looking forward to that I have missed. I was looking at this list and I was like, oh my God, it's going to be so hard balancing the new releases, what I already own. Like it's going to be I like, how do I balance what I want to read for these next three months? Because there's a lot of good books, like a lot of good books and a lot of like finales coming out. So really, really excited for the releases. I so excited. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in my future videos. Bye.